All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro, Chris Wynn filling in for Mr. Sharp. Nothing like a little Allison Chains to wake you up in the morning, by the way. Uh, so we covered this story yesterday. We've been covering it throughout the week where we heard that uh, there was a possible agreement between MGM Properties and the October 1 victims in this lawsuit. We played some of that live press conference yesterday where that's around where they came up with somewhere close to $800 million. There's 2,500 people involved yeah. in this. And the woman we have with us on the line with us right now, I uh, really want her to tell her story and what she thinks about all this. Her name is Dr. Heather Melton. She lost her husband tragically in the October 1 shooting a few years ago, and she's really gracious and nice enough to join us this morning. Heather, thank you so much for being here. How are you? I'm, I'm doing okay. Thank you for having me. Heather, I know this, I can't even imagine how difficult this is for you to talk about, and I hate to ask you about it, but just to, if it's okay to give people a little bit of background on, on what took place that night. Obviously, your your late husband is a hero uh, for what right. he did, but can you give people a little bit of background on, you know, waking up that morning, it was just a regular day, and then just go from there and tell us what you can, if that's okay, Heather. Sure. Thank um, you. You know, we've been out there for, for all three days, and... um you know, just like any day of the three days of the festival, we went there, we were there most of the day. We were actually having a really great time. And we had discussed possibly even going home early because we had a flight the next day, but we were having such a good time. We decided uh, to stay that night. And, um, I mean, probably, like, as far as the three, we went, really went there to see Eric Church uh, on the first night, but we were having a really good time that night. And uh, we had had a meet and greet with Big and Rich and, just the whole atmosphere was really cool. Like there was just every people of all different races and ages and just all coming together and having a really good time. And we had actually commented on the vibe just because there's been such negativity in our culture lately. Um, it just felt really good. And um, so we were just dancing and singing. And I first heard, you know, just kind of a pop, pop, pop. And, I, you know, looked at my husband, Sonny, and I said, you know, was that gunfire? And he goes, I, I think it might be fireworks, but it was, you know, loud music. You're in Vegas. You don't know necessarily where it's coming from. Well, the second round that went off was much longer. And if anybody's seen the videos, they know exactly what I'm talking about. But, um, you know, it became very obvious that this was not fireworks and that somebody was shooting at us. Um, almost impossible to tell where it was coming from. Um, and people just started falling down and people were running and there's 22,000 people. We were pretty close to the front. And I said to my husband, I said, you know, um, we, we need to get down. And he said, no, we'll get trampled. And um, so he just wrapped his arms around me from behind. We started running and we maybe only took two steps and I felt him get shot in the back. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, point, yeah, go ahead. Now, uh, at that point, we both kind of fell to the ground, and I couldn't tell where he had been shot, um, but he was not responding to me. Um, and so there was still, you know, a firestorm of bullets around us. I could feel, like, the concrete ricocheting and hitting me. I mean, and quite honestly, I was waiting for any moment to get hit myself, you know, um, and there was just kind of like people on the ground and screaming. And, um, so I did, he wasn't responding. I, I honestly was like having a hard time telling if he had a pulse, like if he was breathing, it was just dark and it was chaotic. And, um, so I just started performing CPR on him and, um, I was just screaming for help. And then he started bleeding from his mouth at that point. And, you know, with my training, I knew probably, you know, that he had he had died, but I, I couldn't believe, you know, I couldn't believe it. Like, it's so surreal. Um, and so you, you almost like, wait, is this really, you know, is this really happening? And, um, and I still kept holding out hope, but I, I was trying to get him off the field. And, um, at that point, you know, I was just screaming, screaming, and finally um, two guys came out and helped me carry him off the field, and they put him on the back of a truck. So it wasn't yeah, even it was a paramedic. Enough. It was it was no, two bystanders. No, there, was no, yeah. there was no paramedics. It was just two concert goers, and uh, we were in the back of a truck with uh, another man who was shot who also um, passed, mm. and a young girl who was shot, and she was alive. And they were... Um, 
doing CPR on them all the way to the hospital. <clears throat> the oh. hospital that, and it, as we're leaving, like speeding down, you know, the the strip, um, going through red lights or whatever, uh, the first responders were heading in the opposite direction towards the venue. Mm. So by the time we left, nobody was even there. And when we showed up at the hospital, it was just a small, like, local hospital. It wasn't the trauma center. Mm-hmm. They were they had no idea that the shooting had even occurred. So they were pretty taken aback when they have a truckload full of injured people, you know, right, right. going in there. Um, and they took Sonny into a room, and, uh, I, you know, it wasn't very long before they came out and just said, you know, they didn't even know where he was shot. Honestly, at that time, because I think the original report said he was shot in the head, but it was, it was in his shoulder, and um, you know, and that kind of was the beginning of the nightmare. Shot in the shoulder. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, uh, because when you say you know shot died instantly, you think head or chest, right? Right. Well, it entered his left shoulder, but it went diagonally across his chest. I mean, oh, it basically okay. hit everything it could hit. Yeah, no, I understand. I'm so sorry that that you had to go through that. Uh, I guess the only thing you could say about at least at least you know in the last moments, you and your husband that day ha- were having a fantastic time together. I guess that's right. what you have to take away I from know. it the great time that you were having, right, uh, Heather? Right, and I mean we uh, we always had a great time together, but yeah, I I literally remember um, at one point looking at him and thinking like thanking God that I had found him. Mm. And that I was able to have that kind of love that I didn't know was possible. How long did you know him for? Um, five years. Five years. It wasn't okay. very long, yeah. Five years. Um, and yeah. I was going through a bad divorce when I met him. So we went through some really bad times. And we were actually at a point we'd just been married for about a year. Wow. And we were building a home together and just kind of like starting our lives over after mm. the destruction that a lot of people know divorce can be. How, how, and, what would you want to tell people about him, you know, for people that maybe uh, never knew him? Uh, what would you want to say about him? Well, I think what everybody talks about, you, did, you didn't forget him. He had the smile that lit up the room, but he was a nurse and he was just the most compassionate, like loving, like person I've ever met. And that he just had a way about him that if you met him, you know, you remembered him. And I've received many letters from his patients that just talked about, you know, what a caring nurse he was and a gentle soul. I mean, he just Mm. was almost too good to be here for too long, I feel. You know, he just was that kind of person. Well, Heather, first of all, let me just say thank you for for sharing that. I know it can't be easy for you to share that story with us that you just told us. Thank you for doing that. Now that we know the hell that you've had to go through, in losing him and having to live with this every day for the rest of your life. I want to talk to you a little bit about this settlement that was reached between MGM and uh, I believe 2,500 people, right, including yourself. What are your, what, is, what was your initial reaction when you heard that MGM had final settled with this lawsuit? Well, you know, I mean, we knew, we knew something was happening. We haven't been told a lot, to be honest with you, and that was intentional, I think. But, um, like I can't, I was actually operating and I came out of the operating room and somebody had the article on the phone on their phone and said, I guess you know about this. Right. And like, honestly, my first response was response was really visceral. It made me kind of nauseated and <laughs> sick to my stomach. And I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's kind of like, you know, a lot of people think, well, Oh, you know, you're getting the settlement, but we didn't win the lottery. We lost, you know, and there's, even if they gave me the whole amount, I wouldn't take it if I could have my husband back. Of course. Right. No, and I, and I completely understand that. Money's not going to bring him back. And, it, you know, I mean, I get, you know, and I think about the people who are still in, enduring surgeries and medical expenses, you know, and, and I hope it brings some closure to a lot of people. I, I don't think if you've lost somebody, you ever have real closure. I think that's just a word that kind of gets tossed around there. But for me, I don't think, you know, it's going to bring me any closure. Um, I mean, I, I didn't want to be in litigation with MGM or anybody, to be honest with you. It just, it, it I, I'm glad that they decided to work something out without that actually happening. So Heather, Robert Englund, who is the lead counsel, who, rep, who is rep, representative attorney 
in the uh, for for the twenty five hundred plaintiffs, including uh, your family, he said, "quote unquote." While nothing will be able to bring back the lives lost or undo the horrors of s- so many suffered on that day, this settlement will provide fair compensation for thousands of victims and their families. Now, of course, you've already described your feelings regarding, you know, the, the amount of money and, you know, it, it doesn't matter how much money it is. It, it's not, it's not going to bring back your family. Uh, what, how does that make you feel, though, when you hear, you know, the attorney, you know, speaking that way uh, about the settlement? I mean, I guess I know, you know, you know, I almost don't know how to respond to that. I mean, it is. I mean, but there's there's some people there's a whole spectrum of what people who file lawsuits have endured from anywhere from probably PTSD to, you know, death. But there's people who are paralyzed. There's people who are still having surgery. So I think for each person, it probably means something different. Mm -hmm. Um, I think for me. One of my biggest issues, and I've expressed this to my lawyer, is that I wanted policy change to occur. And I want to talk to you about that. Yeah, I want to talk to you about that, Heather. I want to give you a chance to talk about that. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Dr. Heather Melton. Uh, She lost her husband tragically in the October 1 shooting. She was right there with him a few years ago. We just had this uh, MGM settlement uh, yesterday. Okay, Heather, let's talk about that. So now we talk about policy, right? We talk about gun control on this show all the time. So what do you make, first of all, the weapons that Paddock used, the weapons he was able to get up there to that room? We talk about assault weapons all the time on this show, and I certainly think more needs to be done. Our politicians need to be working together. Heather, it almost seems like we're talking about these mass shootings on a weekly basis. What do you make of, of where we're at right now in society with these mass shootings, and what do you think should, should be done? Uh, you know, I mean, I, that is a huge question that I, I don't even think most people grasp the enormity of even trying to change that. I think, I mean, I personally think that we have had a humongous disconnect in this culture of having any value for life. And th- this man also had explosives in his car. And, you know, the psychopathology behind some of these people, I mean, it it's just, horrifying and if they want to find a way to kill they're going to find a way to kill i will tell you up front i i live in the south and you know my husband owned um an ar and my brothers own own guns they're all legal gun owners so and i don't think he'd want me to speak out against it but we obviously have to do something better to vet the people who are purchasing these weapons and knowing how how you know what they're buying how much they're buying and also not just their their criminal background, but also psychological background in some way to flag these individuals who should not be purchasing weapons. As we know, there was another shooting at a church with a man who was released from the military because of psychological issues. He should not have been able to legally buy a gun. Right, right. No, um, yeah, I'm so with you. It's an enormous problem because the mm-hmm. laws are state to state. There are literally hundreds of thousands of guns already out there. You know, so... It's not just gun control, but there, ha- like, there just has to be, you know, I, I think a lot of social media, too, because, you know, I feel like this man who killed my husband, I just envisioned him sitting in front of his computer, you know, mm-hmm. looking at things on, on uh, social media, becoming anger and rage, feeling like he doesn't have something that somebody else doesn't have, and nobody's lives matter. Yeah, that's a good point. We seem to, you know, feel like, mm-hmm. you know, that... If somebody doesn't believe the same way we do politically, then somehow they don't matter. Exactly. And, um, yeah. you know, if you don't va- value somebody else's life, then you don't care if it, it gets yeah. taken. And, you know, people have said that even about the people who are killed at this festival. Yeah, which, which is horrible. And you make such a good point, Heather, because it's it, you're right. It's not just gun control. we got to talk about mental illness. we got to talk about social media. we got to talk about... You know, red flags, you know, uh, when you see someone act a certain way or do something, you, people need to be diligent and they need to report it. I, I, I hate to ask you this question, but I have to do it. You know, if you had a chance to speak with the Paddock family, would you say anything to them? What would you say if, if you had a chance to to meet with anyone in that family and talk with them? Well, you know, I don't know the whole background, but I've, I imagine they're suffering enormously, too. I I, I feel heartbroken for them. And. You know, I I don't know if they saw signs, but if they did, you know, even when people say something, sometimes it's hard with mental illness to get that treated and and addressed. 
So I'm heartbroken for them. I'm sure that they feel a lot of guilt and shame and about what what their family member did. So, sure, sure. I mean, I would not hold anything against them. And I've actually made it a really big point in my life to not feel anger or hatred towards Mr. Paddock either. Mm, I mean, I think um, that is that is very courageous of you and not an easy thing to do. I have to commend you for that. You know, it's interesting because, we, uh, Heather, we were just talking about the story. I don't know if you heard about it about the, the police officer who went into an apartment that she thought was hers yeah. and went in there. Yes. And, and, and the testimony of the brother of the victim, he's on the stand. Not only does Amazing. he say he forgives her, but he actually hugs her in court. And I see what you're doing, it, it, very similar to what he's doing, and, you know, not holding that anger in your heart. I tell you, I give you a lot of credit for that. I have to ask you about this, Heather, because this bothers me. I, I would imagine this bothers you. Were you right there where you lost your husband and 58 people lost their lives? MGM is now turning that into a pay-to-park parking lot. I find it to be utterly disgusting. Um, I know that they're going to do some sort of memorial there, but I don't think the first thing they should think about is how do we make a profit off of where 58 people died. Also, two-part question, Jason Aldean, who performed there that night, in, in no way am I blaming him for anything, but I'm very disappointed in him for this reason. He has not come back here and done any type of charity event to help the victims uh, and I've called him out for that on the air. You know, Ariana Grande, where that you know, overseas, where they had that horrible tragedy at that concert, that terrorist attack, and she did a charity event. You know, not long afterwards to raise money for the victims. So, two part question: Number one, what do you think about this pay to park parking lot where you lost your husband? Number one, and number two, what do you think about Jason Aldean not coming back here and doing anything for charity? Yeah, I, I mean, um, I, I, I've realized in my life now that most things are driven by money and, you know, it, money is the king and MGM, uh, I think it's disgusting, but as far, I, I feel like their behavior has been the whole time. Um, you know, I was staying in that hotel exactly 10 floors below the shooter and, um, just even how they treated me when I went back to get my stuff, I didn't find very, you know, sympathetic or empathetic to my problem, but, you know, and I can't, I can't answer for Jason Aldean either. I, I know that I'm surprised, honestly, because the rest of the country music community has really, yeah, they have, they they have done a lot. And I went to concerts and benefit shows that have been put on by other country music artists. And there's hardly a show I go to that they don't mention it or they right. haven't written a song about it. Right. Um, you know, so you know, he is in the spotlight for it is, you know, and I, I don't know what it's like to be in his shoes, but I mean, I do think it, it would probably be uh, healing for some people. I know a lot of people have gone to see him at other places saying, we're going to finish what we started. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think it would probably be, you know, beneficial to some of the victims if he did that. You know, just from a healing standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. And by know, the way, and, and by the way, Heather, I am in 100 percent agreement with you. The way MGM has handled this situation, I think, is disgraceful. And, uh, you know, the, the counter lawsuit against you guys was was atrocious. They say, well, it's just a legal maneuver. Oh, give me a break. Give me give me a break with that nonsense. They didn't have to uh, counter sue you guys. They could have settled long ago before going through all these shenanigans. Heather, right. uh, I, I, again, I, I'm so sorry for your loss. And, um, and and all the others that lost their lives that were injured or even that weren't injured or didn't lose anybody but just go through the horror uh, every day of having to be there that night. Uh, yeah, we're glad that MGM settled, um, but, uh, you know, I know the pain will never go away, but maybe if we can make something good out of this and change some policy, and like, I, like you said, not just gun control, but mental illness to, to have other people never have to go through, sadly, what, what, what you had to go through, Heather. Thank you so much. For You're taking welcome. taking the time to join us, we really, really appreciate it. Uh, it certainly means a lot to us and the listeners, Heather, and, and we wish you luck moving forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. All there right. you go. Bye -bye. Thanks, Heather. Thank you. There you go, Dr. Heather Melton. Wow, that was some powerful stuff. She lost her husband. She was right there with him in the last moments of his life on October 1. She called MGM. I think the word she used was disgraceful, right, or disgusting. Yeah. Uh, she's right. I agree with her. She's also one of those people that agrees with me when it comes to that should not be a parking lot. I also find it interesting when she said that she was staying 10 floors underneath where, where Paddock uh, uh, you know, executed 58 people, and she said when she was getting her stuff, when she went back to the hotel after she knew she just lost her husband, they didn't treat her with respect. I find that 
utterly disgusting and deplorable. Well, Brian, it's outrageous, in my opinion, and preposterous to think that it's going to be a parking lot. It doesn't matter if it's pay. I don't, I don't care. It should not be a parking lot. It should be a memorial, much like the 9-11 memorial in New York City. Mm-hmm. Okay? There would be, it should be something along that lines. If, the, if that's not the, the, the mindset of MGM... Or, or the people, that, the powers that be that are making that decision, it is an absolute disgrace, in my opinion. I agree. I agree. It's disgusting. And, and, I, it, and you know, that they, they say, Chris, that they're going to be putting up, you know, some sort of memorial. You know, so what? So what? The whole place should be a memorial as far as I'm It's the largest mass shooting in American history. How much money okay? does MGM have? We're not is, talking about we, some, we live some in small Las business. Vegas. We've been, Brian, we know the deal here. Yeah. We live in Vegas, okay? This is a desert. It's not like we're, we're not talking about some major city where, you know, land is so expensive that, oh, yeah, we, mm-hmm. have, to, we have to consider, you know, the financial aspects of it, of, you know, uh, the, that, that area, you know, the, 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 uh, you know the, the whole planning behind it or the reasoning behind it is because of it's a money deal. No. Okay, what went down there is going to go down in Las Vegas history as the most horrific mass shooting ever. Okay, it should be a memorial. It should not be a parking lot. We are in complete agreement. He's Chris Wynn. I am Brian Shapiro. Coming up next, we're going to switch topics. Michael Avenatti. It is time to get in the ring with him. We're going to talk a little. Yeah, there's been a little bit going on in the news when it comes to the Trumps. Uh, We'll get to Michael Avenatti and we'll take your calls too. two, five, seven, five, three, nine, six. We get back. You're listening to the Vegas Take.